Hey, this is Mal with Beacon Code It, and I'm going to show you a program that simply loops over a bunch of numbers and prints them out of, on a screen. And why we are doing this is so we can learn, learn something called for loops. They're loops. It's a way to loop over something, and it's a very popular way to loop over something when using C Sharp as well as many other languages. So let me show you what we're interested in. I'm going to put a stop a breakpoint right here um, before the end of my program basically so we can debug and see what the output should be from the program I have made. Let me hop over to it. There you see it. I'm writing out numbers on the screen, 1 through 10, 1 per line. So you'll see 1 through, th uh, one through 10 right there. I'm going to close this and I'm going to show you how I have accomplished this. So all I did is go to File, New, Project, and I created a new console application. I called it Loops. I hit OK. I'm going to hit Cancel here because I have this pre-baked for us. You will see something like this. We're going to insert some things in here. The first step that we should do is create something called pseudocode, an algorithm, steps that define what we need to do. But it doesn't have to be a programming language. You could just take these steps and figure out what you need to do and write it down in English. You might notice this slash star, and at the end you'll see a star slash. This is how you write a multi-line comment in C Sharp. The slash star opens the comment. You write a whole bunch of things. Visual Studio's IDE puts these stars in automatically just to sort of let you know you're still in a comment there, but they're unnecessary. Okay, And to end the comment, this multi-line comment, you put star slash. Pretty simple. Inside here I broke this loop program down into an algorithm. I started with what I want to do. It's a program that loops over a number and prints it. Let's create a quick algorithm pseudocode. Okay, then you'll see one, two, and three. One, identify a number, the number of times that we'll be looping. This will be the condition of our loop statement, meaning if the number we're on, like we're counting one, two, three, if it's less than or equal to this number of times that we want to loop, then we're going to print it out. Otherwise, it's going to exit that loop. Second thing we're going to do is we'll need a variable to hold the number we're counting. This is the Numbers, number that's changing, the one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll then increment that number after every loop. Inside the loop, we'll simply want to write out the number to the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and see what I did here. I identified a number. We're using it as a variable right now. We can make it a constant later. We can ask the user for input to change the variable, whatever. Right now, I'm just defining it int, it's an integer, and I'm calling it upper limit. It makes sense, doesn't it? You'll notice that I'm using camel case here. Int upper limit equals, so I'm assigning it now. I declared it, now I'm assigning it to the number 10. I could make this 1,000 if I wanted it. It doesn't matter, I'm just making it 10. Next step, I'm creating a variable called iterator. That's just a fancy word that says counter. Um, it's the number that's going to be changing. It's the number we're counting inside the loop. It's also an integer. Now, here's the loop. This is what it looks like. Don't be freaked out. You'll memorize it soon enough. It's called a for loop. So it starts with the words for. In s after the words for, you'll have parentheses. So let me go ahead and type this out again for you. For, then I put parentheses, right? After the parens, I'm going to go ahead and just put my curly brackets, just like we would in our if statement, right? It's similar to that. For, something in parentheses, and then this op these opening and closing curly braces. So write that out, type that out first. Then let's fill in the blanks. Inside the parentheses, the for loop looks a little funky. There are three parts to a for loop. It's trying to make it easy on us. It will be easier once we get used to it. First step is define the thing that changes in the loop, the thing that we're going to be 
um, you know, just the counter, basically, in this case. It's, an, uh, it's the iterator. We've already defined it up here, but I'm assigning it here. So the first step is an assignment, okay? And then put a semicolon. So I'm assigning iterator equals 1. So when this for loop starts, this, whatever's here, is going to happen just once on the first time the for loop runs, just once, okay? Then the next statement is our conditional statement. What statement should be true in order for our for loop to continue running, to continue looping? What's the condition? Well, I want it, so this iterator number, as long as this iterator number is less than or equal to our upper limit, which up here we defined as 10, we're going to continue going through the loop. That's all it means. It's your condition for the loop to keep running. If this, whatever's in here, returns true, evaluates to the value of true, then your statement will continue running. It stops running. Your for loop stops when this changes to false. Okay? The last statement in our for loop is what to run after every iteration of the for loop. And right here is a, um, it's a quick shortcut, this plus plus. It's an operator that basically adds one to a variable. Okay, so we're saying iterator plus one. That's all it means, plus plus equals iterator plus one. So we're saying before you g jump to the next iteration of this loop, add, the, add one, in this case, to our iterator. We could also write this iterator equals iterator plus 1. Same thing, same thing. Now, this number can change. It doesn't always have to be plus 1. It could be iterator equals iterator plus 2. That's up to you. Right now, we're just going to keep it simple and say iterator plus plus, which means iterator equals iterator plus 1. Okay, then inside our loop in the body, you see this, this is pretty familiar familiar to you right now, system.console.writeLine, and then inside we're passing the argument of iterator over to this method called writeLine, and it will display whatever the iterator value is in a given loop onto the screen. Then we close our for loop and we close our main function. You see when I highlight over the bracket, it will show the bracket that matches. Then we close the program. This will all be done for you in Visual Studio. And then we close our namespace. All right, let's go ahead and test it one more time. I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. This breakpoint is basically saying um, stop the execution of this program in debugging mode um, before the end, in this case, the end of the main method here. Okay, so it just breaks it for us so we can see it so the screen just doesn't disappear. And ta-da, there we go. There's our program. I hope that helps a lot. Okay, take care.